So we've seen that the optimal monetary policy using our solution statistic formula and using available estimates of the monetary multiplier is that roughly the Fed should increase uh, the Fed funds rate by two percentage points for any uh, any time that the unemployment gap is negative by one percentage point and conversely the Fed should drop, reduce the Fed fund rate by two percentage point any time you know, the unemployment gap is uh, positive by uh, one percentage point. Okay, so for any one percentage point of an unemployment gap, you expect a two percentage point response of the Fed funds rate, you know, in the appropriate direction. Um, now the question is, uh, does the Fed actually do that? You know, because if you if you follow the New Keynesian literature, you know, there's um, there the, the behavior of the Fed is described as following a Taylor rule, where they look at inflation and their response to inflation. Um, According to a certain, you know, a certain coefficient, there is no mention of the unemployment rate at all. So, if you follow the uh, the New Keynesian literature, what I'm just saying would make no sense. You know, like there is no sense in this model that the Fed would respond to the unemployment rate in any way, and you know that they would just decide to respond with this type of uh, with this type of amplitude. There's just no way to make sense of that. Um, sometimes they introduce say output gap in uh, Taylor rules and combine it with uh, inflation. Uh, but, you know, the output gap is kind of hard to measure and in any case not directly related to uh, to the unemployment gap. Um, so it's just a totally different approach. Um, but given that everybody at the Fed is well versed in the Keynesian model, given that the new Keynesian models are the typical, you know, are the like, mainstream model for monetary policy, you would wonder if it really makes sense to describe the Fed as responded to the unemployment rate in that way without, here I haven't even mentioned inflation. Um, I'm just saying, yes, I should respond like that to any change in uh, in, uh, in the unemployment gap. Um, but it turns out that actually the behavior of the Fed is, uh, is you know, uh, well, you know, this response to the unemployment rate is something that you do see once you study the behavior of the Fed. So they do seem to respond to the unemployment rate. Uh, and the unemployment gap in a way that's quite close to what we've described. Um, so here I'm, you know, when I'm saying that, I'm, I'm, I'm using two papers that have actually studied the response of the Fed funds rate to changes in unemployment rate uh, and try to see like how much the Fed funds rate respond to that. And what comes out of both papers is that it, it's quite close to what our optimal uh, formula says. Uh, so two percentage point change in Fed funds rate for any one percentage point change in uh, in the unemployment gap. Now, of course, uh, the papers we're going to mention, they don't really, you, you know, they don't know how to measure the unemployment gap. Uh, they don't have a measure of that. So what they just look at is they look at the response of the Fed fund rate to a change in unemployment, not the unemployment gap. Because, you know, they don't know how to measure that. Um, but of course, because efficient unemployment rate is so stable, you know, in the short run, looking at a change in unemployment rate is almost essentially the same as looking at a change in unemployment gap because the efficient unemployment rate is very, very stable over time. So you will get the same insight if you just look at how the Fed funds rate responds to a change in uh, the unemployment rate. Um, so if you look at that, what you get, so one paper that looks at that asks this question and look at the response of monetary policy to unemployment is that paper we've already mentioned before is Bernanke and Blinder, uh, 1992. Um, and so what they find is that uh, when they so they, they do a VAR analysis, and what they find is that when uh, U increases by uh, 18 basis point, so basis point is one hundredth of a percentage point. Um, so when U increases by uh, 18 basis point. Uh, the Fed funds rate uh, increases by 28 uh, basis points. Okay, uh, so what we learn from that is that the response of the Fed funds rate uh, to the unemployment rate is that that means that the Fed funds rate increases by 28 divided by 18, and that's approximately a 1.6 percentage point when U increases by one percentage point. 
Okay. Um, so this is what we learned from this analysis. And so here you're expecting from any change in unemployment rate by one percentage point, you would have uh, an increase in the Fed funds rate by 1.6 percentage point. Uh, and, uh, and of course, because the way we can interpret this is uh, because um, you star the efficient unemployment rate is so stable, what we can say is that, you know, this indicates that the Fed funds rate increases by 1.6 percentage point when benefit U minus U star increases by one percentage point, just because uh, over time, you know, U star is moving only very slowly. So usually an increase in unemployment rate by one percentage point would lead to an increase in the unemployment gap, you know, by one percentage point. Um, so that's what comes out of it. So here's the number is 1.6. So that's not two, but it's quite close to two. Uh, Um, so, and you know, of course, there is some uncertainty about the value of the monetary multiplier. So, if you have a multi monetary multiplier that's a bit bigger than 0 0.5, then you would expect a response of around 1.6. So, that's totally consistent uh, with uh, the type of optimal policies that we've been describing. Um, another paper that's looking at that, a more recent paper that's trying to ask the same question, uh, is a paper by Stock and Watson, 2001. So they ask exactly the same question, and they use similar, uh, they use more modern tools, but they uh, use uh, tools based on uh, VARs, and um, what they find is that uh, so they look at what happens when you have a surprise increase in unemployment, what happens to the Fed fund rate. They find that when unemployment goes up, in a you know, when you have a surprise in unemployment, the Fed funds rates uh, tend to decrease, so exactly as, as we've been discussing. And what they find, so they have two, two kind of estimates on impact. So just after the unemployment rate has increased, uh, they find that the Fed funds rate uh, drops by two percentage points when the unemployment rate increases uh, by one percentage point. Uh, that's an impact. So that's exactly, you know, given that, as we've discussed, change in unemployment rate, change in unemployment gap are the same in the short run. Uh, so that's exactly as predicted by our uh, policy analysis. And then they have a more uh, medium run analysis and they look at what happens after one year. Because, of course, we know that unemployment has some dynamics, the Fed fund rates has some dynamics. So after one year, what they report is that uh, the unemployment rate, right, so after one year, what happens is that the Fed fund rate has decreased by uh, 3.2 percentage point, and the unemployment rate has increased by uh, 1.5 percentage point. And so in the medium run, is at the one-year horizon, it means that the Fed funds rate decreases by 3.2 divided by 1.6, which is exactly two uh, percentage point when U increases by one percentage point. So we get exactly the same, uh, the same results. Whether it's on impact or whether it's after one year, the Fed fund rates tend to respond to uh, drop by two percentage point for any one percentage point decrease in unemployment. Uh, Oh, sorry, that wasn't 1.6, that was a 1.5 here. Uh, uh, yeah, right, my bad. So this is a 1.5, and so this gives us 2.1 percentage point. Uh, okay, but, you know, close enough. Um, so it really looks like uh, the Fed kind of uh, behaves really very much in line with, uh, with the formula that we've... Uh, that we've proposed here. And so we can look, for instance, at the very recent episode of monetary tightening. Is that consistent with what we've seen? Uh, COVID-19 uh, tightening. So now, of course, currently, the, you know, the Fed discusses the tightening. They mention inflation a lot. Uh, 
And, you know, who knows how far they are going to go into tightening because they have to deal with that inflation problem. But we can still just look at unemployment and see whether anything is consistent with what we are uh, discussing here. It turns out that the unemployment rate is too low in the, uh, because the recovery of the from the pandemic has been so strong. Um, the U.S. labor market has been exceedingly tight for uh, you know, more than a year now. And so if you have an exceedingly tight labor market, you have a negative unemployment gap, it makes sense to raise rates. So what the Fed is doing now of raising rates, even without inflation, it would have made sense. So now you have both to fight inflation and unemployment rate that's a bit too low. Um, so there's no trade-off here. It, it was clearly a, you know, a good thing for the Fed to increase rates. And in fact, maybe they should have started earlier because you know, they waited almost uh, nine months since the labor market has become too tight to start raising rates. Um, so that was quite a long time, especially given that policy has a bit of delay in, uh, you know, when you change the policy, it takes a bit of time to percolate in the economy. Um, so nevertheless, if we just look at the labor market, how much would we expect the Fed to tighten? So here is um, a graph that we've seen before. So this is the unemployment gap in the U.S., uh, in the aftermath of the pandemic. Uh, so you can see you have the pandemic recession right here. And so in, in early 2002, so in 2001, here it's around May, the labor market uh, started to become uh, too tight. And you can see uh, as of spring 2022, the unemployment gap was minus 1.5 percentage point. So if we use our formula, what's implied by this is that uh, the Fed fund rate should increase, increase by uh, 1.5 times 2 is equal to 3 percentage point. Okay, uh, so that's what would come out of the amount of uh, the excessive amount of uh, tightness that we observe in the spring 2022. Uh, so Fed fund rate should increase by uh, around three percent point just to take care of that excessive tightness and try to bring the unemployment rate closer to its efficient level. Um, and um, currently, that's uh, roughly the level that we're at. So in fact, the Fed fund rate was at three percent all the way until November. And now there has been a big uh, new increase in the Fed funds rate by uh, 0.75 percentage points. So now we are closer to 4%. Um, but as of October, um, the response the response of the Fed funds rate as of October, so moving from zero when the Fed fund rate was at the zero lower bound in the aftermath of the pandemic to 3% in October 2022, that is like the total increase that you would expect just based on the uh, just based on the state of the labor market. Uh, now, of course, in November, the Fed fund rates went even higher. Uh, so now we are around 4%. Uh, but that makes sense because the Fed has two things to do now. It was to maybe cool down a little bit the labor market, bring it closer to efficiency, and fight inflation. Um, and so to fight inflation, they have to, you know, there's an extra reason to raise uh, rates even further. Uh, now, of course, we don't know much about the response of inflation to uh, the Fed funds rate. Uh, if you, you know, all this evidence that I've talked about for uh, the, uh, un you know, the monetary multiplier, so the impact of nominal interest rate on unemployment, this we have, you know, a lot of estimates and it's pretty clean. The response of inflation is much harder. Um, if you look at the same VAR evidence, you know, the standard errors are much larger, the response are much smaller. It's really not clear. In fact, that was one of the conclusions of the Cristiano Akenbon Evans survey in the handbook of microeconomics is that it's really not clear how the price level and inflation, you know, they respond to uh, the Fed funds rate with a lot of lags and a lot of uncertainty around that. So, you know, who knows how inflation is going to, you know, how long it's going to take for inflation to respond and how quickly it's going to respond and so on. Um, but at least just taking a labor market perspective, um, now, it makes quite a lot of sense that, uh, that the rates uh, reach 3% in the fall, given that in, given that in the spring, um, the unemployment gap was minus 1.5 uh, percentage points. So all of this uh, kind of makes sense.